population proportion. Proportion is another parameter in the population. We show it by P. P is the proportion of the population that have some characteristic. For example, the proportion of female students in a class. That means the number of female students in the class divided by the total number of students in the class. Or it could be any other characteristics. For example, the proportion of students majoring in economics, the proportion of students from a specific country or a specific state. Sampling proportion is shown by P hat. This is P hat. It's called P hat because this looks like a hat that P has on. P hat is the sample proportion provides, which is an estimate of P, the proportion in the population. How do we find P hat? Well, it's similar to what we do for the population proportion. So P hat is X divided by N. N here is the size of the sample, the total number of individuals in our sample. X, on the other hand, is the number of individuals or items in our sample that has that characteristics that we are interested in. So similar definition, the proportion of a specific characteristics or individual data that does have characteristics divided by the total size of the sample or individuals in our sample. Proportion is a value between zero and one. Also, p hat, the estimation of proportion in our sample, is also a value between 0 and 1. The distribution of the sample proportion. So we had central limit theorem for x bar, the sample means that if n is large enough, the size of the sample is large enough, then x bar would follow a normal distribution. We could have a similar scenario for p hat, the sample proportion as well. P hat is approximately by a normal distribution if n multiplied by p is greater than or equal to 5 and n multiplied by 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 5 and n is large enough. In that situation, P hat would follow a normal distribution. So if we actually plot the distribution, the shape of the distribution of P hat, it would be bell shaped and symmetrical. So it can be approximated by a normal distribution. In fact, p hat would follow a normal distribution with average equal to p and a standard deviation equal to this value. So that means that we can actually use this formula to standardize it. Next example. If the true proportion of voters who support Proposition A is 0.4, what is the probability that a sample of size 200 would yield a sample proportion between 0.4 and 0.45? So this means if P is 0.4, the proportion in the population is 0.4, and N, the size of sample is 200, what is the probability that P had the sample proportion is between 0.4 and 0.45. To be able to find this probability, we need to know the distribution of p hat. So we would know what formula to use to find the probability. So let's see actually the conditions that we had for normal distribution for proportion, sample proportion would hold true. So the first one was n multiplied by p must be greater than or equal to 5. Is this whole true? So n is 200. 200 multiplied by p, which is 0.4, would be actually 80. And 80 is greater than 5, definitely. So this holds true. The next condition is n multiplied by 1 minus p must be also greater than 5. Let's see if this is true. N is 200, 200 multiplied by one minus 0.4 is 0 
200 multiplied by 0.6 is 120. And 120 is definitely greater than 5. So the next one is hold, also hold true. Next is n must be large enough. So for example, n greater than 30. This also holds true because n is 200. So all of these conditions hold true, which means that p hat, the sample proportion, would follow a normal distribution with an average of p and a standard deviation of p multiplied by 1 minus p over n. So now we can use the normal distribution to find this probability. So let's see the solution to this example. So we know that p hat would follow a normal distribution. And what we are looking for, we are looking for the probability that p hat gets a value between 0.4 and 0.45. The probability actually is the blue shaded area right here. So we know that p hat would follow a normal distribution with an average of p and a standard deviation of p multiplied by 1 minus p over a square root of over n. So this is the standard deviation. We need to find the standard deviation first. Let's compute it. So the standard deviation of p hat is 0 0.0346. This means that p hat would follow a normal distribution with an average of 0.4 and a standard deviation of 0.0346. Now we can find the probability. The probability that p hat is between 0.4 and 0.45, we can now convert this to the z distribution. So that would be the probability that z instead of p hat would be between the z, of, the z value of 0.45 and the z value of 0.4. So we need to find these two values, the z value of 0.45 and the z value of 0.4. The z value of 0.4 is 0 and the z value of 0.45 is 1.44. So this means that this is equal to the probability that z is between 0 and 1.44. So and this is equal to the probability that z is less than 1.44 minus the probability that z is less than 0. This comes from here and this comes from here. The probability that z is less than 1.44 is 0.9251. minus the probability that z is less than 0 is 0.5. So if you compute this, this is equal to 0.4251. We can also use Excel to find this probability. So that would be norm.s.dist 1.44 minus norm.s.dist of 0, and that would give us 0.4251. So the probability that p hat, the sample proportion, would be between 0.4 and 0.45, is about 43%. Let's do a quick quiz. True or false question. A sample proportion can be assumed normally distributed if n is greater than 30. Is this true or not? Well, this is not true because we would have to have three conditions, if you remember. n multiplied by p must be greater than 5, n multiplied by 1 minus p must be greater than 5, and n must be large enough. So these conditions have not been stated in this question. So this, this statement is not correct, it's false. 